Time lapses are super cool, so today I'm going to show you how to set one up without needing an expensive Raspberry Pi or rewiring the internals of your 3D printer. So here are the things you're going to need. You're going to first need a camera to take a high quality photo. You're going to need a remote switch to trigger that camera. And of course you're going to need your 3D printer. Um, and adding accessories that you don't necessarily need but can be very helpful would be tools for measuring such as a caliper or a ruler or a tape measure if you don't have uh, any of the other two. The idea here is that we are going to have the printer press a button that triggers a photo after every single layer of the print and then we'll have this beautiful time lapse that you've seen on different YouTube videos. So let's get to it. First, we need to measure out the parts in our printer that we're going to be modeling around. So for this one, it's the print head, and it's going to be the x-axis shroud. That's going to hold our remote to press the button, and our print head is going to hold the stick to press the button. Now that we have our measurements, let's take it into a CAD software. I'm using Fusion 360 because that is what I'm familiar with, but you can use any software you're familiar with such as Tinkercad or a number of outsides. Also, if you don't like using these different CAD softwares, you could also use something like Blender. And if you don't even like modeling and if you want to just have the file and try this out yourself, I put these files um, in the down in the description or comments below. So please find those and let me know how it goes. If it doesn't work out so well, let me know, but be warned, every printer is a little bit different. Great, our parts are now 3D printed. So now we need to, using our printer, we need to put these on the printer and measure how far away does the x-axis need to be before it can press the button ever so slightly. You're going to take this measurement and set it up in the g-code. So G-code isn't all that scary. You just need to have a little help of understanding what it means. You can use Cura or any slicer of your choice, but I'm using Prusa Slicer. In Prusa Slicer, I have to come over to Print Settings, go over to Expert, make sure this is checked on, and then go to Custom G-code. Once you're down here, we're looking for the before layer change G-code and the after layer change G-code. I like after layer change, meaning after the print has finished a single layer, what do I do next? And here is the script for what I have set it to do. Now I should have this in the comments below, but if not, here's what it's doing. So while G-code can be scary, I'm here to help you understand it a little bit better. You can copy my G-code if you want, just have no like this is set for my settings, so it might mess with your printer, so be aware. But I will explain you what these to do so you can change them on your own. For example, the first lines, the G1 and G4 command, G1 is move the printer in some way, whether it's filament, extruder, or X and Y and Z axis, or G4 is a pause command of wait uh, seconds and zero or seconds of, of however you want it to be. Uh, second is when you have the G1 command, you have E for the extruder. So for example, in this first command, I'm having the extruder pull back the filament five millimeters at a speed or a flow speed of 3,600 millimeters per second, as we see here. Um, the reverse of this command is at the very end of it. Once it's done pressing the button, I have it extrude out, not the full five, because there's gonna be a little bit of oozing. Um, in my case, and I'm having it speed up a little bit more, so it, or speed down a little bit slower, so that it doesn't push too much, and we're having some issues in the in the extrusion. And then secondly, with the G1 commands, you have the x-axis distance. So x17 means from wherever you homed, it's moving 17 meters, 17 millimeters away, and from wherever you homed, it's the y-axis of 200 millimeters. So this first line here is when I'm moving it away from the print to the same print head, but not pressing the trigger, but before it's pressing the trigger. And then it's going to wait a second before it triggers. And then finally you press the trigger, you want it to wait at the trigger so it actually reads the command. Uh, uh, the switch that I chose uh, needs a moment of holding the button pressed there before it actually triggers. Once you press the command, you need to release the trigger and allow it to wait a, a, a second or however long your shutter takes for the camera to actually click. And then you can go back and start extruding your print again. And again, this will happen after every layer change in the G-code. Great, 
Your 3D printer is all set up for a perfect time-lapse montage, but there's a problem. You might not know how to model for your 3D printer. Check out this next video to see if you already have those skills, or you might need to focus a little bit more before those montages start becoming a reality. Again, thank you for watching and please subscribe.